academia for many, many years. And critical theory and critical literary theory become very esoteric fields. And uh, that is to say, uh, I can't understand a word of it. But no one can either. You're supposed to, you know, oh, yes, very true, that kind of stuff. With, with well, Any time you come across a field filled with esoteric language, you probably know this, be suspicious. Be suspicious that that no one really wants to communicate, that no one really, they don't want to talk. And it's probably because their theory is a fairly lightweight. Mm. Just a, a, and I came across a literary magazine, uh, a, an ad for it online, that said this. It said, we are not interested in the poetry of nostalgia. <laughs> well, that's code. That's code for we want poems that are totally incomprehensible. <laughs> if, if we can understand three lines of this stuff, you're out of here. You know, no, no, sure. you. And I, I love the poetry of nostalgia. Nostalgia means talking about your real life, you know, uh, talking about. And so I wrote this poem about this esoteric language, but also about the poetry of nostalgia that, that these people uh, don't want me to send poems in about. <laughs> yes, so it's called Cherish. Nikon Opata, uh, still alive, he's in his 90s, great Chilean poet, uh, also a professor of, had been a professor of physics at the University of Santiago, uh, marvelous anti-poet who uh, very useful to me as a model. I learned a great deal from Pata. I once met him as I talked about in the poem a little bit. Pata enters the poem several times. Church, great poet. Uh, if you haven't read him, read it. He's, he's a sheer delight, even in his English translation, especially the early ones, that New Directions. They're the last couple of books, not so great in the translations, but any of the old New Directions books of Nicanor Pata are absolutely as good as it gets, I think. Yes, of course. The sign and the thing in itself are in no manner the same. I understand perfectly well the grammatological nature of metaphonemic and proto-factual discourse. <laughs> what Trubetskoy would no doubt have called the contingent glossomatics of the indeterminate text. <laughs> but the trouble is, Notwithstanding all that, the past won't shut up, <laughs> won't leave me in peace. I want it all back, not the nomenclature of epistemic linguistics or some sort of post-dialectic mode of discursive assertion, <laughs> but rather my folks in that cozy doorway in Flatbush, that house on 14th Street, Carol's old piano, Mickey's black wooden attorney at law sign hung from the window over that shingled hatch to the basement and that storefront on 10th where I hawked circle line tours of Manhattan. My booth at the magic carpet just off the boardwalk in Coney Island, three blocks from Nathan's, the North Atlantic pounding away at my back. That movie house in Miami where the black patrons had to sit in the balcony. I could hardly fucking believe it and work there with a bad conscience for two months. Would they have me abandon the past? Devote what time I have left to the unstable nature of syntax? <laughs> Spend myself manipulating self-referential lexical signs? I the most shameless and least ambitious of singers, I who wish no more than to remember and cherish, I who now to my own grief understand well in the words of Nicanor Pata that the decades have wings. Despite the indeterminate, self-defeating problematics of verbal representation, I insist that furnished place up on 92nd, 
off Amsterdam Avenue really exists, or it did, and those evenings spent haunting the Thalia, those <coughs> ancient grainy Chaplin and Marx Brothers slapsticks, and that woman I brought home one night from the cedar where Franz Klein used to hold court, not a structural coefficient of syntactic presence, but an actual woman, <laughs> George Antile's old flame. And the evening I spent there with Duncan, and the week Jim Fraser came back sporting kilts from his pilgrimage to the Scottish Highlands when he and I took that apartment together off Avenue B where Carol Berger lived with Peter and Sandra Scapatoni had a place just down the hall. Suzuki Bean, already a raging success, and a flight above me, Bill Merwin and Moira. One morning, trembling, I leaned back on a bench in Tompkin Square Park, ingesting that first City Lights edition of Howl, that ferocious tidal American rant like those earlier days when I'd ride the Brighton Express reading Whitman and weeping. It was Alan himself one night at a reading at St. Mark's a good decade later who introduced me to Potter himself, whom he knew I adored. And I stood there, stupidly shaking his hand with nothing to say. To hell with the signifier's oblique figurations. The nomos of indeterminate linguistic praxis. It's those mornings waking with Rosy, my first love, back there on 6th Street, the past even now inexpressibly present that evening that Jane and Wendy dragged me to Gertie's Folk City to watch some kid named Dylan wailing over the mic. Diane, this time around, I'll let you do that strip tease at the party. Why the hell not? Then we'll head back to my place. No, this time I'm not going to stop you, nor do I mean to forget your sister dying that way so suddenly, so young. Cassidy, too, gone now forever, and Joan, and Linda, and Jeremy, John, Dennis, and Greg, and Mickey, and Doug, and that large, loving, boisterous tribe of aunts, and uncles, and cousins, Sally, and Gertie, and Manus, and Mark, and George, and Terry, and Molly, and Willie, and Nat. I want to be there again, those teeming streets of downtown Manhattan, those Lower East Side cafes, all those poets and dopers and crazies back in the 60s, the friends that I'll never now get to cherish enough, Alan Cohn and Faye Goldman and lovely, voluptuous Billy Grayson out on the Tilden Clay Courts. Is Eddie DeMarco alive? Is Vinnie, Lou Lipton, Marilyn Branscombe? Cherish, cherish, that's all I can tell you. Sign and signifier be damned. No one and nothing down here is going to last. You know it too. Nicanor Potter, wasn't he right on the money? Though the days drag their feet and the weeks creep ever so slowly along. The decades have wings. I don't need one more poem. Yeah.